Hello all you forest explorers. This is Branch Manager episode number 31. I'm going to show you an area where I'm located right now, which is about five kilometers west of Parksville, BC on Vancouver Island. To my left, there's a road and a forest, still growing, still untouched, doing well. Mostly Douglas fir, anywhere from the age of 30 up to 80 years of age. And now I want to move over to this now remaining forest stand, which I will walk into. Showing you the trees here. Now, again, I will go back into this area. And now I'm panning through this area. This area has been commercially thin. Now, commercial thinning is a great thing. Something I've mentioned in past episodes, but commercial thinning can be done on a stand of trees that is uh, needs to be thinned out. The trees that they take out are course of merchantable size that can be used for plywood to make paper pulp furniture so on and so forth so it's it's the best of both worlds you're taking out the smaller trees in a an even age stand or stand you're taking out trees that may have been diseased or could be getting diseased in this particular area I know there is pockets of root rot Douglas fir root rot Luckily, it's pockets. The stand that's remaining here, after they've taken out the trees in between, and those trees in between are what we call co-dominant. Uh, they are subtop canopy trees that are big enough, like I said, are big enough to market, to take out a market. So a machine has been used, multifaceted, multifunctional machine has come in, cut the trees, Picking them down and forward them, cut them in, and put them in piles, ready to be loaded onto a logging truck. It's a pretty smooth operation. I'm just going to pan around again one more time here to show you how this stand looks. To me, that's a beautiful sight. To see this done, now to me this is the way most harvesting should be done in British Columbia. reason for that is it does not take all the trees out, it is not pure, pure clear cut, it takes out the poorer trees, the trees that are susceptible to disease or possibly poor sites, poor growing sites, they're co-dominant, they're not going to make it up to the light like the trees that we want to leave. So we're taking those trees out. You could uh, liken that to weeding your garden, taking weeding uh, your row of beets or carrots, taking them out. So what happens to the rest of the carrots or beets? Well, they grow better, they get bigger, taller, they bear the vegetables bigger. This is what's going to happen here. These trees that are left are going to, well, I'm sure they're quite happy. As we know, we all know that trees are living. They are living just like humans, and they start as microorganisms in the ground, but they grow and they continue to live. Even now, when it's well into the winter, they are still uh, active in their stems and their systems. There's so many benefits to this kind of, this harvesting. And, and to me, it, it looks good. I, I have to say, it looks good. I like the idea of thinning the stand. And I like the idea of taking out the inferior trees. Inferior trees that generally are just not going to make it anyways. And they're not going to make it up to the dominant part. So you can see up here, 
those trees that are left there, you know, they have dominant, dominant crowns, and that is good. So they will, will do well. Trees below it, and in Douglas fir, especially where Douglas fir are light demanding, taking out the trees underneath that are Douglas fir is going to basically utilize them for a good purpose for wood, valuable supply to mankind in various forms, and is also going to allow the remaining stand of trees to to flourish. Again. The trees that were taken out of here are anywhere between oh, 30 to 50 years of age. There are many other factors, areas that are clear cut, and of course, that's only, clear cut is only one of about six or seven different silviculture systems. And the information is not out there properly silviculture utilization and standards that are being used in this province. It's not out there properly to the public so they understand what's going on. So this, this is the best form of harvesting to me. Now, there are other types I'm not going to talk about, of course. I have mentioned one other one, but this is the best one, the most practical, the most economic, the cost of taking these trees out, the value and the cost of taking these trees out should be pretty well balanced. And of course, once the trees get to the mill, they're utilized and made into products that we all need, products that are essential to, to living and to people, of course. Trees are so important. However, the other thing is these trees are left. These trees are still, as you can see, big canopies, fairly tall trees, not that old, gathering, sequestering carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, yes, from the air, and through photosynthesis transpiration, they are producing oxygen, sending oxygen out. The carbon also in the trees that were taken out, there's carbon, uh, an innate amount of carbon in the trees, which will be processed through and taken out through the system as those trees are manufactured into different products. Commercial thinning, remember that. Remember that it does a lot of great things. And I'd like to remind you to keep it real and keep it green. Thank you.